The Reality of the Gospel World Outreach Ministries presents the Voice of Deliverance broadcast, featuring the explosive preaching, bold teaching, and the powerful prayer of deliverance of Heaven's Ambassador, Leonard Ford. Brother Ford is a minister that does what others don't, and he has a ministry that goes where others won't. He and his wife, Jesse travel across America and around the world, preaching hope and bringing deliverance. Whether they are in the church, under the gospel tent, or on the mission field, they boldly declare that if you continue in the word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now I present to you, Brother Ford. Immediately he arose from them, took up the bed and walked, and left there glorifying God. And they was all amazed, and they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, we've seen strange things today. Strange means new. You could have received it yourself. Mark 5. Mark 5. No, 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 no. We in an hour now. I told y'all, this is a, this is it's faith time. It's time to get your faith up like never before. Get in the word like you ain't never been in the word. Let me tell you too. And I'm, t- I'm just talking about the connection and the healing and the miracles. But one of the reasons we having a faith clinic in April is because God told me, let me tell y'all something. Go back and read about all Robert's tent. Now read past the headlines and all the miracles, all the cripples and lame and hard. And read behind and see all the persecution, all the hate mail he got, all the lies that was told, all the bad press that came. See, what am I telling you? When you, you, oh God, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. And then when he started using you, Lord, I didn't, I didn't sign up for the persecution. Yes, you did. And by faith, you got to walk through it. By faith, you got to stand in the midst of all that ridicule because the hand of God is on you and you chosen to meet the needs of the people and the devil is your adversary before you get there and he's your adversary when you get there and having done all the stand, you got to stand, you got to withstand persecution, withstand being lied on, talked about, withstand folk coming to your service and on purpose are told not to give because the devil trying to make you quit. You got to get your faith up so that when God starts pouring out, you can handle the outpouring. We got faith just locked over here. One thing, I got faith to get my light paid. Matthew, I mean, Mark 5, 21. When Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, now he just got through casting out a whole legion of demons. Man that was in the graveyard. Man was out there cutting himself naked, breaking chains and fetters, walking around terrorizing the coast because he was being tormented. Jesus set him free, put some clothes on him, put him back in his right mind, sent him back home to go preach the compassion of God. Go tell somebody what good things God has done for me. Get on the boat, go to the other side and what the Bible says he came over to the other side and much people gathered unto him and he was not unto the sea. A crowd met him. He ain't even preached yet. Behold, there come of one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. Now people like to magnify the fact that he was a ruler of the synagogue and they acting like the crowd just parted because who become the ruler. No. They didn't have no vision no way. It's just like me and my wife was in Hot Springs. I'm, I went to preach in Hot Springs but Joe, and all of a sudden I get through preaching and God give me a word for this woman. I call out, prophesy to her. She fall out. She get up. I say, I went and got dry, put my dry clothes on. I came out, shook her hand, talked to her for a little bit. I said, you going to be back tomorrow night? No. No, I, I watch you on TV. Now I met you in person and you shook my hand. I'm good. She done saw the celebrity. That's what they came for. They didn't come to get nothing from Jesus. They came to see the celebrity preacher. Huh? You got to understand. I was talking to a lady yesterday. She said her sister saw me you know, a week or so ago. And she said, oh, she was so happy because she watched you on TV. And then she got to meet you in person. That's how some folk are. I met him. He signed my book. I took a picture with him. You couldn't take a picture with Jesus, but I met him. Watch, 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 watch it, watch it, watch it. When they all gathered around Jesus, this man here got a need. He's bringing his faith to the anointed. He fell on his feet. He humbled himself and besought him greatly, saying, my little daughter lied at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. What's the next five words? What? Wait a minute. 
It's a crowd here. Why did Jesus go with this man? Not because he's a ruler. Read your Bible. He the only one made a request. The crowd has made no request. They just there. They just, Jesus is here, up here. I'm, I'm watching. See what he's going to do today. I wonder what he's going to do. I want to see a miracle like old Herod. I just want to see a miracle. Forget the fact that I need one. I just want to see one. <laughs> like folk getting the prayer. You know, some folk getting the prayer line, you raise your hand, they fall out. Other folk getting the prayer line, sick as a dog. I ain't falling out. You laying on, they bracing themselves. I ain't going down. I don't want you to go down. I want you to get healed. But I mean, if it, if it takes yielding, because I ain't impressed because you do a courtesy drop and get up still sick. That don't impress me. Jesus went with him because he made a request. His request put a demand on the anointing. I'm talking about connecting to the anointing by faith. Connecting to the anointing by confidence in God. Connecting to the anointing by trusting God. And much people followed him and thronged him. They all over him. But they make not one request. He walk up in the crowd, make a request, and Jesus follow him. They follow him, look, follow him to his house. Yeah. Now you telling me it's a crowd and don't nobody need a healing. I haven't seen one yet. Watch this, verse 25. A certain woman, that means it's not a parable, y'all. It's, it's the truth. Which had an issue of blood, how long? That's a whole decade plus. And had suffered many things of many physicians. Pause. You know how you have operations and then they, they cut something they weren't supposed to cut and make something worse? She done suffered many things of many physicians. Every doctor she went to didn't know what he was doing. Watch this. And had spent all that she had and got worse. You ain't go to the doctor to get worse. Well, you can't get worse if I pray for you. But you'd rather stay at the house. Oh, well, you know, I just don't feel like it. They're going to have service. You know, they're they going to have, they're going to sing for 45 minutes. Then they're going to take an offering. And then the preacher, he preached long and loud. You know, I don't want to be, I, I ain't got time for all that. Just, just go stand in proxy for me. Tell me, tell them pray for me. He ain't never told nobody, go to the doctor and take a pill for me. Go to the doctor and get a shot for me. Mm. Watch this. Watch this. She had suffered many things, grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press and touched his garment. Now, I want to pull this out and, 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 and flip this for a minute. When she heard of Jesus, verse 28, she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be healed. What made her say that? Whoever told her about Jesus, because the Luke tells us in the sixth chapter that they came to hear him and to be healed, and many touched him, as many as touched him were made whole. I believe some of them folk who just touched his clothes went to Bernie's house and told her, Bernie's girl, there's a stranger in the city, and he's healing. Now, we don't really know. It's a controversy. Some say he the Messiah. Some say he got a devil. But all I know is I was blind, and now I see. All I know is we were down there the other day, and Uncle Ned touched him. He threw them canes and crushed just down and been walking ever since. I'm telling you, girl, the man didn't even call him out. We just touched his clothes and power. God was healing everything. And I'm telling you that he don't charge either. You need to get on down there because I'm telling you there's a stranger in the city and he's healing. The lame is walking. The blind is seeing. The dumb is talking. The deaf ears is coming open. And you know what? She sit there and meditated on that faith come how? By hearing it. So she sit there and I hope begin to rise again. Her expectation got so strong. She said, well, if I can touch the him or his garment and they said girl he's a rabbi he ain't just got on a little talitha he's got on a rabbinical jacket and his tassels hang way down so you can get in the crowd if you just get down there around around the end of his jacket there and touch the touch them them, them tassels you, you girl I'm, she got up and got in the press you know if you've been bleeding for 12 years you weak you anemic you don't feel like getting in no press See, faith don't, don't operate by feelings. 
She said, if I may touch but his clothes, he don't have to call me out. He don't have to recognize me. He doesn't have to pour oil on me. He doesn't have to pronounce a cure over me. He doesn't have to lay hands on me. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, and according to the way it's written in the Greek, she kept on saying it. And I believe she kept on saying it before she ever left home, because that's called meditation. I believe she sit there on that porch day after day, meditating on what they told her, thinking about what they told her, turning it over and turning it over in her mind and say, you know what? I feel like the four lepers. Why sit I here till I die? The doctors couldn't do nothing for me. I'm getting worse and worse. But I believe all these testimonies. I believe old Leroy came by here. He had his clothes on. Wasn't no chains hanging on him no more. If Jesus did it for him, he's no respect to a person. I'm going to believe like he did. I'm getting up and getting in the pressure. I've heard that he got an anointing without measure. I'm going to take my faith. I took my faith to the anointing of the doctors and got worse. I took my faith to the skill of the physician and I got worse and I got broke. But I kept going until they wouldn't see me no more. Now I'm turning my faith toward Jesus. I'm turning my faith toward the miracle worker, the water walker, the blind eye the deaf ear, unstoppable, the lame man healer. I'm turning my faith to the man that raised the dead, cast out demons. I'm turning my faith toward Jesus. And if I can just touch his clothes, I shall be healed. She sit there that she persuaded herself, Bernice girl, it's worth it. Get up and get in the press. What do you have to lose? The doctors won't see you anymore. If you sit here, you're going to bleed out anyway. If you sit here, you're going to die. You might, if they stone you, you can't do nothing but die. I believe she got Esther faith. If I perish, I perish, but I'm going to see the king. If they stone me, let it be so, but if they don't stone me, I'm going to touch his clothes. I'm going to take my faith to that anointing. I'm going to join my faith to the anointing. When you, she got there, don't you know she saw Jairus right next to Jesus, but now her faith is in Jesus. She ain't worried about no Jairus. Why? Because he can't do nothing but throw a stone. But if I can just touch his clothes, I'm going to be healed. She pressed in. She laid a hold to the hem of his garment. And the Bible says, immediately the healing didn't place, take place to after the faith was connected to the anointing. Immediately the fountain of her blood dried up. Listen, she didn't feel first. She didn't feel to after it dried up. And she felt in her body, oh my God, that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue, power, anointing was gone out of him. Wait a minute. The crowd is strong in him. A whole lot of folks are touching him. A whole lot of folks got their hands on him. But some faith touched him this time. She touched him by faith. And her touch of faith drew virtue. Her touch of faith. Listen, she, she touched his clothes, but the virtue came out of him. She touched his garment, but the virtue came out of him. He said, who touched my clothes? He didn't say who yanked on my clothes. See, the, the word of knowledge says, somebody touched your clothes and drew out what you felt leaving you. And Jesus said, who did this? I've been in this crowd rubbing up against me. Ain't nobody released faith. Only one man made a, a request quest or put a demand on this anointing but somebody will put a demand on my anointing without a word it was just a touch of faith and they got in there in faith and he said who touched my clothes yeah. Yeah. that's why the disciples are, you, my boss you tripping what you mean folk rubbing all over you what you mean who touched you all these folk touching you no 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 that was a touch of faith that was a touch with faith in it Seeing the multitude throng, and he said, who touched me? Verse 32, he looked round about to see. He said, no, no, I ain't moving from this spot. Hold on, Jairus, I'm going to your house, but somebody touched me. I got to see who this was. See, he don't know. God ain't revealed it to him yet. So the woman fearing and trembling. She was fearing and trembling. I believe part of that trembling was that anointing going through her. Hallelujah. And she walked up to him and she began to tell the story. And see that we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have knew this. We wouldn't have had verse 27 to this if she hadn't told the story. And the Bible says, watch this. The woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him what? All the truth. And he said unto her, daughter, thy faith. Why he didn't say my power? 
Why he didn't send my virtue? Why didn't he send my anointing? Because he had that same anointing when they was rubbing up on him, touching and pressing on him, but nobody was releasing faith. He said, daughter, your faith made you whole because it was your faith that activated the anointing that's on me. See, sometimes we don't understand. You stand before people to preach and look like you can't get it off the ground. You know why? Because they ain't got a lick of faith in the anointing that's on you. You go someplace else and preach and you just dripping. I mean, you can't hardly walk. You just dripping. It's flowing. You come back around folk that you love, folk that and you can't get nothing. Can't, can't prophesy to them. Ain't, I mean, ain't, not, ain't none of your anointing working. Go into another atmosphere and it just gush out. Yes, yes, yes. It's a respect thing. Watch this. Watch. Daughter, thy confidence in me, thy confidence in my anointing, your trust and belief in the anointing have made you whole. Go in peace and behold of thy plague. Did you notice? She told him all the story. He didn't tell her to go to the priest. He told the lepers to go to the priest. She told him, I had an issue of blood for 12 years. I've been to the doctor. Jesus is a rabbi. He know the rabbinical law. Girl, you're supposed to be stoned. You got to go to the priest, and the priest got to pronounce you clean so you can get back in public. He said, you hold, go your way. She, I mean, it just, it just broke up the, the, the protocol. The girl that went and got dressed and went back to the sorority club. What? Bernice, girl, what you doing up in here? I ain't heard no priest pronounce you. Uh -huh. The rabbi said I was whole. All right, all right. You go back to the doctor. He wonder what happened. Mm -hmm. Who's listening to Mark and Trina? She had a brain tumor. The doctor said it was inoperable. But she started working that word, and he started working that word, and they kept working that word. And one day, he walked in and talked to the tumor. Mr. Tumor, listen to me. I'm talking to you. And he told it to dematerialize. He told it to disappear, to die, to dry up, to wither, to leave, and leave no trace. They took her back to operate on her. She was laughing on the way to the operating room, laughed through the whole operation. And the doctor came out to the waiting room and said, uh, 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 Mr. Uh, uh, Hankins, I don't know what to tell you. That tumor just disappeared. Six hours back there to find out it's gone. It, it just ain't here. It didn't just disappear. It was spoken to by faith and authority, and it had to bow its knee. I'm telling you, no matter how bad it gets, we can see what we want to try to do. What you say he said? How did he say that? Mr. Tumor, I'm talking to you, right? That's what he said, right? No, no, no. If you ain't speaking in faith, Positive statements do nothing. Just because it's positive don't mean it's faith. And folk want to say, I do believe God. When's the last time you read your Bible? Well, I'm, but I still believe God. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. If you ain't in your word, your faith gone. You just got faith memories. You got faith fumes. I did put some gas in my car when? Three weeks ago. How far you done drove? 389 miles. And where you think you're going now? To the gas station. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Your daughter dead. Don't bring the master to the house now. Too late for him. Why troublest thou the master? Look at what they said. Any further. Let it stop right here. Let death have the last say. She quit breathing. It's over. Really? Carrie Blake's daughter died. He buried her. Nine years later, when his other daughter died, he picked her up in his hands and said, you will not die but live. She already did. He said, you will not die but live. Forty-five minutes. He wouldn't quit. For 20 minutes, he carried her in his arms. He got tired. He sat her down for 25 minutes and spoke to her and spoke to her and spoke to her. And finally, she just threw up and said, Daddy, I'm hungry. Let me say this. In the meantime, his other children and his wife came in, and they were saying, well, I mean, you know, he said, listen, if you can't believe with me, get out of here. Watch this. When the girl came back to life, then he called the paramedics. They took her to the hospital. They examined her, and guess what they said? She has been clinically dead for at least 45 minutes. Clinically dead for at least 45 minutes. She ain't dead now. What happened? He, see, he, he got, when his first daughter died, he said, I ain't had no faith. I didn't know this. But he had been studying and searching and seeking and digging. And this time, see, faith came alive. The gift of faith wouldn't let him quit. See, I'm not talking about being desperate. 
You can be desperate as you want to. If you ain't got no faith established, ain't nothing happening. Who got enough faith to stay with the dead body 45 minutes? Because something in your gut saying it ain't going, it ain't going to end like this. I could tell you about Samuel Rodriguez's daughter, but let, 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 let me get y'all. Y'all getting weary. As soon as Jesus heard what the bad report was, see, when God hear folk talking negative, he'll quicken you. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, they weren't talking to Jesus, they talking to Jairus. As soon as he heard what was said, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. Believe what? Believe what you said when you came to me. You said if I lay my hands on her, she shall be healed and she shall live. How many know if you die sick and you get right from the dead, you still need a healing? He's telling Jairus, don't unsay what you said. Let's stay said what you said. Just believe what you said. You said if I go lay my hands on her, she's going to be healed and she shall live. Even though she died for I got there, keep saying what's been said and I'm going to do what you said. And the Bible said, he, now from this point, he cut the crowd off. They was there to see the lady. They was there to hear her testimony. But when this report came, y'all stay here. You can't go with me. He suffered what? No man to follow him, say Peter, James, and John. I mean, the mother disciples kept there to keep the crowd from going. He come into the house of the ruler of the synagogue, see the tumor, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was coming, he said to them, notice what I want you to understand. The last thing Jairus said was lay your hands on her and she shall live. You do not hear another word from Jairus. He never undid his faith. He never unsaid what he said. He never re-spoke what he had spoken. See, you got to, once I believe, therefore have I spoken, Jesus said, stay in faith. Why well, keep believing now? She's dead. Stay in faith. Watch this. The damsel ain't dead. She's sleeping. They laughed at him. But when he had put them all out, did, did you check what he did? First, he stopped the doubting onlooking crowd. He get here, he changes the atmosphere in the room by putting all the doubt, all the gain sales, all the mockers, get out. Now you see why when Peter went to raise dark, he said, put them all out, y'all get out of here. When Elijah raised the dead, the woman had to stay someplace else. He went in there by himself. Watch this. He took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, who are you talking to dead folks? Tell her thy kumai, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, he's talking to the dead girl. He takes folk to a fig tree. It hurt him. See, we think when folk in a coma, they can't hear. Yes, they can. He said, arise. Straightway, the damsel arose and walked. Now watch this. Go to Luke chapter 8. Same story. I want you to see how Luke said it. Yeah, I know he gave us something. He told the parents to be quiet. But we don't worry about that. Luke 8. We're closing with Luke 8, Luke 8, 52. Same story. We cut into the chase. And all wept and bewailed her, but he said, weep not. She's not dead, but sleep. They laughed at him knowing she was dead. He put him out, took her by the hand and called, saying, maid, arise. What's the next five words? Wait a minute. If your spirit left your body, you ain't naturally rest and sleep. You dead. The body without the spirit is what? Dead. When he said, arise, the spirit came back in the body. Read Elijah's case. It said his soul came in him again. When he spoke the word, his, her spirit came again and she rose up. What happened? Faith. Connected with the anointing. Jesus had the anointing. Her daddy had the faith to get the anointing to the situation. And when the anointing got there, the anointing rectified the situation. But the anointing changed the atmosphere. See, he put them out. Do you understand when you walk in a room under the anointing, the anointing on you changes the atmosphere. You walk in somebody else's house, but you just took control. Because there's an anointing on you. Other times, folk would be arguing with you. You walk up in there and say, get out. Ain't my daughter. Ain't, mm -hmm. Get out. Why? Because there's an anointing on me. What did he say? I only do what I see the father do. I only say what I hear the father say. So I'm telling you, you can't take this as a formula. Next time, I'm going to put them out. Who told you to put them out? 
You don't just put them out because that's a formula. You're walking in the spirit. You yielded to the anointing. Father, we love you. We praise you. We honor you. We magnify you. We adore you. We bring our faith to your anointing. We know there's an anointing to cancel every debt we got. We bring our faith to that anointing. We connect to that debt counting and anointing by faith. We think there's an anointing for supernatural increase, surplus, abundance, and divine overflow. We bring our anointing to it, and we believe we receive the manifestation. For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus, that though he was rich, yet for our sake he became poor, that we through his poverty might be made rich. God, there's a healing anointing in this house tonight. We bring our faith to it. We know what the doctor's report is. We know what the x-ray said. But our covenant says with his stripes we heal. We bring our faith to connect to the covenant tonight. See, what have you said that you unsaid? What have you said that you haven't left said? If you say it, leave it said. Why? So God can do what you say. He can't do what you unsay. Because every time you speak, you release your will. That's why he told Jairus, do not let fear in. Stop the fear. Hold the faith. And everything's going to be all right. Everything going, 12 years, faith changed it. Dead, faith changed it. Power was present to heal. Doubt kept him sick. But faith showed up when he saw that faith. Think about it. The place jam-packed. One person got healed. At the pool of Bethesda, thousands one person got healed. I don't know why folks get upset with you. You're in the prayer line. You pray for one person and you say, I'm done. What? How are you going to just quit? Okay, at the pool of Bethesda, only one person was going to get healed that got in that water. Jesus came by, healed one person, and left. Conveyed himself away. The man didn't even know who healed it. God, man has already done his best and failed. But you are her God. You shabba. Eyes, listen to me. I'm talking to you. You are under covenant. You are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. So I curse this infirmity. Now, by the power of God, I command you to be healed. Rabushtai, ye kushtile ma anzo rata shebe bebe bosha. Thank you, Father, for your healing power. Thank you, Father, for your miracle working power going into eyes. Shabai, di de anzo ku utaba anzai. Thank you, Father, for your healing power. In Jesus' name, glory. Courage through the uncompromising message that you heard today. If you would like to have this message in its entirety, send $8 for compact disc or $20 for video to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 1640-91, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you would like to become a partner with this ministry, you may do so by joining the Ally 200 Club at $25 a month, or you may become a truth ally for $10 or more each month. Send your offerings to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 164091, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you continue in God's word, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free.